Hello, I'm Robert Wiesemüller. I'm the eSports manager of Race Room. I've been sim racing since uh, 2007, so quite a long time. And of course, I know the wonderful Mr. C. And today, we're going to have a chat. Hello, Robert. Nice hey, to see Mr. C. you. <laughs> nice talking to you. This is a long time coming. Uh, for the people that might not know you, few of them as they, they are, can you please tell a little bit of yourself, like your real life thing, and then a very short summary of your like long and illustrious sim racing career. <laughs> okay, hello everyone, first of all. Um, yeah, my name is Robert Wiesemüller. I'm 30 years old now. So uh, quite a long time already in the sim racing. Um, yeah, I've been driving since 2007. I started on race, the WTCC game back then. And um, for a long time, I participated in many community championships like the race department, touring pro series, GPVWC. So I went around a, a couple of leagues. Sometimes I even won. And uh, now since uh, 2017, I work at race room. So I, I think a few of you might know Race Room, the, the racing simulation. And uh, I worked there as an organizer for the eSport competitions. We started off with the eSports WTCC back in 2017. And by now we actually have quite a few. We have a GT Masters Championship, a Cupra Championship, uh, soon a DTM Championship, so something to look forward to. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's, that's pretty much uh, I, what I can say, and uh, sim racing is my my big passion, and I think that's you know that's how we know each other. We raced uh, a long time ago against each other and together in the touring pro series and in race department. Thank you very much. Um, we're gonna start with off like with some standard questions like that I have for the other people also. What's your like biggest achievement in sim racing except the job? Because I presume yeah. that's the whole. <laughs> but no, like a championship or a race or like something yeah. that you're really proud. Yeah, I think that's hard to say because there are a few great moments, you know, that I'm I'm also very proud of. And um, one thing that I'm really proud of was actually that uh, last year uh, I qualified for a LAN tournament in Austria for the A1 Esports. And... Um, yeah, it was the first time that I really qualify for, for a big tournament with prize money and uh, they pay me the flight and, um, you know, you can drive on the motion simulator there. You're treated like a, you're the superstar, you're a VIP, man. And uh, that I achieved that, you know, actually when I was 29, when I was not really competing anymore regularly, but I just come back for the competition and I make it okay in the final. I, you know, I was last in the final. Okay, whatever. But still, that I made it to this tournament, still at, at this point for me, is probably the, the greatest achievement. Awesome. And uh, I think I asked you this before in our long uh, conversations, but do you have like uh, an enemy? Like, where, now you're not racing competitive because you're doing, the, you're doing the work for everybody else to enjoy, which is awesome. And thank you. Uh, but do you have like a, one guy that, Whenever you see on track, oh my God, no, let's fight, let's, let, or it's a target for you. I want to beat that guy. It's, I think I always had it in every championship that there was one guy that I wanted to beat, but it's not the same guy every time. I know back in the day I drove in the league called Touring Pro Series. We drove a lot of championships there, and there was usually the guys actually from my own team. I had my one of my teammates was Toby Davis, for example. And I always had a, you know, I always wanted to beat him because he was like the, the guy who ran the team. He was the best driver in the team. And I was always very, very motivated to beat him. And uh, yeah, so back then he, it was him. And uh, yeah, now, now I drive on the leaderboards and race room for fun. But there's still a few names, you know, some people that I know, they are my age and they drive the same time, like... Uh, Jan Stange, Norbert Leitner, you maybe sometimes as well. <laughs> so I, I know, okay, come on, I need to push. I need to get these guys. Okay, so I need to push a little bit better on Brand's head. <laughs> I think I've got four thousands of, uh, of advantage right now, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not much. It's not much. We'll see. So how did you start sim racing? Like, did you uh, discover it yourself or some friends told you about it or back in 2007? 
Yeah, well, I played racing games before, actually, because my dad, he had a computer for basically forever. And uh, even when I was very little, we had the games like the G of Kremens Grand Prix 2, I think. And we didn't have a steering wheel. We just had a joystick, for example. And um, I just drove a... I just drove this game for fun and I watched the motorsports on the TV and I enjoyed it a lot. And then I got like Toka 2 and uh, <laughs> F1 Challenge and all these games, but I play offline only or with my, with my dad or with some friends or so. And um, I was a fan of the WTCC of the real championship. And when the game came out, I went on the first day, I went to the media market, which is an electronics chain in, the, in Germany. And I got this game and then I tried for the first time also to play in the multiplayer. And I just had a joystick still. I didn't have a steering wheel. And then I uh, always drove on this one server, which was called RPM. And it was a <laughs> server that was run by uh, Bram Hengefeld and Yuri Geisen. And Bram Hengefeld, maybe some of you know, he's the guy who founded the uh, race department. And uh, they invited me to their championship, which was the RPM WTCC league. And this was the first league that I drove. And it was a really cool championship with four servers already. And... Uh, I was, uh, I think I was 16 at the time and I was uh, super motivated. I really wanted to, you know, get good at this. And um, that was my first experience. So I, I started sim racing with the joystick and um, it went pretty well, actually. So talking about uh, competitions, do you feel like I'm, I'm sometimes I'm like um, dreaming that if I have like the proper time, I could still be at I wasn't like very competitive, but I was like half decent, especially in front wheel drive cars. And I'm, I'm still dreaming like, look, if I have the time, I, I still have that speed. Do you, do you feel the same? No, <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't think I have it anymore. And that was one of the reasons why I kind of switched sides because at some point, like, you know, when you're young, you want, and you're a competitive guy, you want to compete. You always want to run in the, in the front, win the championships, win the races and, uh, um, I think in sim racing, there's a lot of competitions now where the level is really high, where there's prize money, LAN events, maybe not this year so many LAN events, but, you know, there's kind of a competitive scene. Pro teams, esports teams are joining in and uh, the level has really gone up again. And for me, of course, I know I cannot invest the same time anymore, but sometimes every now and then I still invest the time just to see where I'm at and it's not enough anymore. It's enough to have like a small success, you know, get to one tournament, get on the one leaderboard in a really good position. But I just have to be honest, uh, to really win a race on a, on a, on a big scale league, it's, I, I can't do it anymore. I can't pull it off. Other guys are too good. Well, there goes my dreams. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I know I'm dreaming. Uh, like I have Mihai Neg, Salut Mihai. He's like really fast and now he's like attempting to do front wheel drives and he's like really pushing me and like, come on, just leave me that little bit of a crown. Like I'm the fastest guy in race room in front wheel drive in a certain time. I'm like, just leave me that little bit. He doesn't want Yeah, but they, they are relentless, you know. I see all the time, you know, when I look on the leaderboards now in race room, for example, or also on Affect or when I look in the competitions, there's these guys like three years ago, I could beat them easy, no problem. Just do five laps and I got this. And but they, you know, they are motivated. They are practicing. They have the dedication. They have exactly what we had when you know when we were on top, right? And they have got the reflexes and so on. And uh, that's just the natural way, you know. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we start. We have to start doing like. Um, uh, what do you have in real life? Like paid drivers or the gentleman, gentleman sim racing leagues? That's that's the future for us. Yeah, like. Uh, <laughs> A league where you know like a minimum age is 30 right yeah <laughs> but i have to tell you one thing we have uh, we have a guy on on race room who's competing in the competitions uh he's called karil vega i'm not yeah. sure if you've heard of him he's a french yeah. guy and he's already in his 50s so uh, he's not a young guy at all he's <laughs> quite a bit older than than we are but he is so determined you know he goes he goes he practices like over one day of driving for one track combination one car track combination and he, he actually improves, you know, he's on a level now where he's like legitimately on the same pace as some of the, uh, as some guys like Nico Demvisniewski, the guys that win in the, in the big competitions, just because yeah, of yeah. sheer determination and investing the time. And, you know, I, I think he really wants to prove himself, you know, more than anyone else. 
And so it is possible, but you, I think it, it doesn't get easier, you know? You have to be a little bit crazy. Yeah. Like, so I, I think I am, but I, I never had the, like, the, the real life opportunity to do this, but I'm not going to tag on to that. I know, I know Vega, he's like, like he did like, he's solid top 10 in front wheel drives. Yeah. He's like in division one. I was like, oh boy, that's uh, good. Anyway, let's talk about the switch. So you went from like a really professional, mega fast alien predator that you were in every combination of car, because you're not only fast in front wheel drives, for people that don't know, to like commentator, event organizer, was the switch hard? Like when you have to shut off the engine? Yeah, from from that point of view, it, it's, it is kind of hard. That I, I still, especially in the beginning, I always wanted to, you know, I, I thought, well, such a nice league and I can't drive in it because I have to work. You know, it's every time the same. I cannot do the DTM league, cannot do the WTCR league because of I'm working on it in the background. I'm not allowed to participate. And even if I was, I wouldn't have the time. So in the beginning, that was hard, but you get a very good compensation for it. So I will be the last one to, to complain. So okay. you have, you have a, of course, it's a paid job, obviously, but then also like you get a lot of behind the scenes uh, views and you can also create a lot of things. You can, you know, you can put it in a certain direction, you can influence things and, and that's also exciting. So what's harder for you? Like is the organizing? Uh, the event, like all the details and everything, and try to make everybody happy, or the commentating? The commentating, for me, it's actually kind of easy, but it's something that I never really focused on. So I kind of did it as, you know, we needed a commentator, and I was already there, so I just commentated on the race, but it's something where I didn't particularly prepare much for, and it's also something where I didn't think, you know, that it would take me anywhere. I thought, okay, I can do it for a while, but there are professionals who are really good at their job and eventually they are going to take over. And for me, that was absolutely fine. And so I never really, I never really took the, the, the steps really to improve, to really work on it. And I just did it, you know, for the, for the time being. And now for a lot of competitions, we have uh, professional commentators who are really, really good at their job and, and I have no problem with that. So the organizing for me, it, it is harder, but it's also the, the, the most interesting part, I would say. So what can you tell us, like, what can you reveal from that job? Like, what's, what's hard, what's nice, some inside. Yeah, yeah, maybe I can start with uh, how you can get such a job, because that's also oh, maybe sure. quite interesting for, for some people. And, uh, of course, I can only tell from, from my point of view, but I think in, in many cases it's that there are people who, who come from the community championships who actually get into the scene. So that's not unusual. When you work in a, in a, for a community league, when you build something on your own, maybe you work on a team, you work as a, you, you participate as a driver, you know, these are the people that the, the organizers are often in contact with. And when you have a passion for a topic and you have a lot of interest, then that helps a lot. So in my case, it was like this, that I was qualified for a LAN event from Race Room in 2016. It was from GT Masters in Hockenheim. They, they had some simulators in the pit lane and it was the first time really that such an event happened, you know, at least that I knew of from, from on, on the race from platform. And I was one of the finalists and to be honest, you know, it was cool. You get to the Hockenheim ring, but the event itself, yeah, it had a lot of problems. You know, they changed some rules. We like to press the brake. You had to put like your whole body weight into the back of the seat because it was <laughs> put so hard. And it was, you know, it was really, really strange. And it's understandable because it was the first event. But at the time, I complained nonstop. You know, I just complained the whole day. The next day, I go back there, I complain again. Right. And uh, I, I was just finished with the university. So I said, you know, I can do it better. Right. And uh, it took some back and forth, of course. And uh, eventually, like half a year later, they gave me an opportunity to uh, to prove it, that I can do it better. And you find out very easily that it's it's not as easy as it seems. You know, there's a lot of things you have to you have to uh, take care of. There's a lot of partners who come in, especially in the beginning. A lot of motorsport series and manufacturers, they got interested in sim racing, but they didn't know anything about it, really. And so you have to do a lot of explaining. You have to be a patient, which is not my strength. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really kind. It was really kind of a, kind of a steep learning curve, 
to get uh, to get some decent competitions. And there's still a lot of things we can improve. We don't really do we don't really do right right now. But uh, yeah, what I would say is so that there's a lot of people from the communities who've come in and who've, who've gotten great opportunities out of it. Uh, Lewis, for example, Lewis McLeod, one of our uh, old friends, uh, old competitors in the leagues, he worked on the Le Mans esports broadcast as a commentator, just as an example. Or Eric Strande, who also competed with us for a long time and who won some some championships in TPS, he works for the FIA now on the sim racing topic. And so I think if you if you really want to get somewhere, then uh, the best thing is to never stop working on your passion and you know. Even if you maybe don't have an opportunity yet from you know one from of the publishers of the big leagues, and you know go at the small league and try to improve things, try to you know build some cool racing leagues, uh, do some good commentary and so on, and eventually I think you will get in touch with uh, with the right people. So, but I know uh, at the moment is racing still hiring. I know you have to be. Yeah. At, uh, oh, I don't. I don't actually know at the moment, but. Uh, if someone wants to send a, send the application for sure, I mean we are we are always interested if there's some, you know, some some passionate people about it. But I'm not on the on the um, human resources team there, so I cannot say for sure. But uh, yeah. Come on, Robert. Just just push somebody only in English. I I can make your life hell. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we will see. We will see after. We will see after this. Uh, this call is over. You know, maybe, maybe in a couple of months it's the other way around. You know, I interview Mr. C, esport manager of racing. You know, and I all I have to say, <laughs> I have to do the YouTube channel then. All right. Um, since we are both fans of uh, race room, like uh, Niels Hissinger had a, like a very good video like a while ago, and he said. Pick the simulator that's most fun for you. Mm-hmm. Not regarding minuses or pluses or like advantages or not. Uh, though we, don't, we do not go into a whole sim racing fight yeah. and everything. But I have the most fun in racing. So we're going to talk about this. Again, what you can... Because I pres- presume this video will get some like international viewers. So which are interest in, uh, interested in racing. What can you tell us about the feature? Because you men- mentioned it in 2020. So... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so first of all, about your first point, I think you got it exactly right, and Niels also got it exactly right. There's so many different sim racing games, and some people say, oh, this is not a sim, this is a sim card. This is a, this is a true sim, the setup is wrong, the tires are wrong. But in the end, we all want to have some fun when we play a game in our free time, right? And so I think that's great if you have fun on, on the game that you play. And, uh, yeah, that's that's what we all want, right? Um, when it comes to race room, of course, uh, DTM is one of the big topics, and that's something that won't take long. Um, we've got the DTM 2020 cars coming up after a long waiting time because uh, we only had until 2016. We had a few seasons, and we've got the historic uh, 1992 season in the game as well. So yeah, there were three years that we missed, but finally we we got it together with the DTM that uh, DTM 2020 will come. And in addition, there will also be a cool competition coming up. So it's basically yeah, two for the price of one, I would say. And uh, so that's one of the highlights uh, that's coming for sure in this year. Of course, I work on the on the competition side, so I I have a lot of information on this, and and not so much when it comes to the to the game features, you know, we have a development studio okay. in Sweden, Sector 3 Studios, and uh, maybe there's an idea for our next guest. If you can get someone from them, you can tell you more. I'm not, I'm not that, that, that good yet, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can say for sure is that uh, the team from Sector 3 Studios, it's actually, I, I think it's a bit more, you know, there's a bit more people than a couple of years ago now, and there's a lot of projects going on. Of course, we have got our, our partner championships, the WTCR is another one, the GT Masters. You know, there are some some interesting uh, things in development in the background for that. And what we always try is to have uh, something cool for the competition side, from you know, also from business to business side. But then also we always try to get, you know, get the cars in the game so everyone can enjoy it. If you drive offline, if you drive online, doesn't matter, you know. So, and um, yeah, at least for the DTM, that's what, that's what will happen for sure. And I think it won't be the only thing this year. There will be a couple more things. One second, I'm gonna make a flag here. Hey, Claudio Klima, I don't know if you, 
You heard that? Drive offline, not like in IDC. We can drive offline the car. And also we can test cars. Take note. Yeah, you can uh, even test the cars for free. I'm mm, not sure if many people mm. know that, but uh, before you buy a car on Race Room, there's a, a free test drive and you spawn on a standard track and you've got, a, I don't know how much it is, actually five minutes or so, where you can just drive around on the car. You can just try it out if you like it. And I think that's quite fair. Yes, it is. And that's why I never bought the FX-17, because I'm... <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it can go both ways for us, you know, some cars, they, they look cool, but uh, yeah, then you try them and you don't like them. So I'm going to press you on it. Uh, do you have like a rough estimate for the competition, which I presume do to mean also the cars? Yeah, I, think it, I think it will be split uh, in uh, two different releases. The uh, competition will probably start before the cars are available for everyone. And um, I think overall, it's uh, everything together. I don't think it will take longer than two months. Longer than two months. Okay, that's not, that's not longer than two months. Yeah. Not okay, longer. that's good. So August, September, maybe end of September, give or take. Yeah, we see. I don't know the exact dates myself yet, so it can always change a bit. Uh, you know, there's yeah. a lot of pressure when you have such a project because probably most of you, they follow the real racing too. And you saw DTM first race last weekend. So there's not yeah. a lot of data available, a lot of, you know, have to do the 3D models, deliveries, the physics, exactly like it is, the sound, which is another big topic, the, the performance data and everything. And uh, this year, all the motorsport leagues, they started so late because of Corona. And that really, in, on the one hand, it gave some opportunities, of course, to, you know, to do some things with the racing series. We had like a real drivers racing and you probably saw uh, that everyone was doing it. The race had the championships, the F1 had with the VIPs and, you know, there were some opportunities. But when it came to the new content, it also delayed some things, of course, because the real series just didn't, didn't start yet. WTCR is not going to start until uh, mid-September, the real series. So okay. in, in some ways, it also delayed some things. So that's gonna. When is the racing championship gonna start? The TCR ah, championship. I cannot. I cannot tell that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had. Just have to be a bit more patient. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, should people like you said earlier a point that I want to to come back to that if you're really passionate and I think I am. I don't know how it looks from the outside, but I know how it looks inside. But they should pursue until something happens because you have like different opportunities. You can be a YouTuber like Jimmy or anything, mm. anyone. You can be a commentator like Lewis. Uh, you can be like an organizer like you. You can be a driver. You can be a team manager. You can be a lots of things in this passion, sim racing. Yeah. But growing in age, I presume perspectives change, like you said. Mm -hmm. So I can be a driver in my 20s, but in my 30s, when I'm not competitive enough or like some people come and fast, I need to, I can still be in the sim racing scene in some way or another. So yeah. this is a message for, from you to the younger guys that, because I see a lot of, at least in Romania, I see a lot of young guys that they, they're coming like really passionate and everything. But after one, two years, they're like, well, I'm in 18, 19, 20, 21, that age, they kind of drift off. So I want to keep them somehow involved in sim racing yeah uh, of course it's a um, it's a decision that affects your life you know how much time you want to spend on the hobby what you want to do for work and um i can understand it if people say after a time okay this is fun but to 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 choose you know to pursue it so intensely it doesn't it doesn't get me somewhere i can understand the thought process but sometimes you know that's not true sometimes it does get you somewhere and uh, sometimes you, maybe you're lucky, maybe the scene it gets much bigger. I mean, we didn't think back when we were driving that, you know, in these days there would be tournaments where people can win $100,000, where Williams has their own eSport team. Maybe you thought it, I didn't, right? But uh, now it is, it is the reality, you know? Now it is the reality that sim racing kind of is like a, a competitive sim racing as well, kind of is a part of the, the motorsports world. And it's not going to disappear, I think. So uh, sometimes it also, you know, the, the reality changes and a lot of opportunities come up that you don't really, that you don't really expect before. But I have to tell you, honestly, I didn't do this 
because I expected to get a job in in sim racing eventually. I just did it for fun because I really enjoy sim racing and it was a big hobby for me. And it's it's just really fun to race against other people and and join the competitions and and fight and improve yourself. And if you have fun with this topic, then why should you stop? Yeah, uh, on the topic of fun, and this is like one of my one of the, my greatest memories, like when I had like the fight with. Um, Top five that is on. I always put it on every new person that I meet in sim racing. I put a TPS uh, series, the race room, the yeah. one where I uh, uh, pass Chris Chris Shepard for fifth in Division One or something like that. Anyway, with the Lada, of course. So, ah, the TC1, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. for me, that fighting, that sense of adrenaline and not achievement, because I didn't say it was fifth place or sixth even. It wasn't that great, but for me it was amazing. So. Yeah. I'm chasing that alone, that feeling alone. And uh, but you you brought it back around so, uh, nicely. And I liked what you did. <laughs> uh, that was nice. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was good that you mentioned the TC1 because I remember a race there that I that I drove in the series. And uh, to be honest, in this series, I spent so much time for practice. And actually, that it was at the point where it wasn't really fun for me anymore. It was like a bit over it already. Because I wanted to, I came to this championship and they were also good, you know, all these people, they were really fast, they could drive and uh, there was this one guy who was the, the king of the of the race room at the time, it was Julian Kunze, he's still competing now, now he's also, you know, not quite uh, on form anymore, but back then he was, he was just the boss. Every time you look on the leaderboard, you see his name on the top. And I spent on every race, I spent like over 15 hours just driving this one track, one car at least. Just driving, driving, driving until I get on a decent place because this guy destroys me in the qualifyings, in the races. He's consistent. He can overtake. He's just better, you know, and I, I practice, I practice, I practice. And then there's one race, there's one race on uh, Sonoma and I get the win and I pass him on the track. And it was so great, you know, and after this, I, after this, I had no motivation anymore because it was like a... You know, it was all for this moment, but it was worth it. You know, it felt great, you know, to, to set a goal and to achieve it. And, you know, at the same time, the racing is fun, of course. So, and it, that can, that can really drive you. And that, that is a feeling that is the feeling I probably miss the most. You know, you don't have that when you organize a league or so when you do your job and, but that's something in sim racing that's really special. But you get it a little bit, like I get it from the team's perspective, because when my team does great, yes, it's not the same feeling as when I'm driving, but I still get a jolt. It's like I have like this, like I activated the team again yeah. in the Romanian Championship. And when they do like really well, like, oh my God, like in one, I, we had like two races per event in, in, in the last round. We have four cars and all of them were in top five. We, yeah. uh, watching Victor Nikolai, I hate you. Because he was like the fifth car and he was in second place. He didn't allow us to be like one, two, three, four. So that was a joke for me and brought back, back memories. Anyway, um, talking about, uh, let's talk about sim racing, but of your, I'm going to be put in a difficult spot now. Compare, not, not compare, that's a bad word. Where do you put the race room? Uh, anecdotally, so not like fact based because we already established that it's fun based but compared to like do you have m more fun in other sims like air factor 2 new automobilista i racing acc so uh, honestly it's just my personal opinion and not from my job or so i have a lot of fun on race room and i played it before and i also have a lot of fun on air factor 2 for me these are two games i play for fun um, Assetto Corsa Competizione is another one which I don't, I haven't really figured out how to how to drive fast on the game, but it, it felt really good. Um, the Automobilist, I just had a short try of it. I really like the old games, you know, when when they had the same engine as the, uh, the you know the Affector based engine. When this was game stock car, the first Automobilist, I really liked these games. The new one, it feels a bit different from the physics and. When I tried for the first time, it was also fun, but I didn't exactly know what I had to do. And to be honest, iRacing, it does not interest me. It has like a great <laughs> mode from the, from the comp you know, how you can join the races. But whenever I drive this, it feels like you have to, you have to be so careful. You know, you can't push. 
you can't go hard. You go, you go hard, you go a bit over the limit. Oh, okay, you spun off. Nice. You know, you go in a fight with someone or you get incident point. You get, uh, you also spin your car. I don't know. For me, you know, I said, I drive the touring cars. I drive hard on the track, you know, clubbing is racing. It's not my game. Yeah. Uh. I also like Air Factor 2, but the sounds in Air Factor 2 are like, like race room is like head and shoulders above anybody else. Maybe ACC comes close-ish, but some cars in race room, oh my God, they sound like the M1 in a race room is like amazing. Yeah. And I think the credit goes to Anthony, who is our sound designer, and he's been working a long time already on on these cars and he goes to all these french tracks when they have the historic races especially and he always goes there with his recording devices and so on and uh, he just really puts a lot of heart into it as well and the dedication to get it as close as possible to the to the original i have to say you know that the stuff that i said to cause it it really impressed me i think they they've come a long way they improve a lot and and also affect i'm not uh, on the sound that they don't really pay so much attention, to be honest. But also, they I think they 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 get the game in the in a good direction now, and and I think that's great. You know, finally something uh, something happening on the on the sim racing. You know, everyone's improving. Um, how hard is like when, to commentate? You said it's an easy job for you, but do you have well, like <laughs> <laughs> easy uh, Do you do you? Do you only drink water or you have something like a beer or something to spruce you up or little bit? Or like no, a I just, <laughs> no, I just drink water and it's it's not really easy as such. I think one problem for me is that it's not my native language. So sometimes I have to think what a certain word means in English. Uh, but it's just how you approach it. I think uh, I, I just don't, you know, make myself the pressure. So... And I'm just relaxed about it and approach, and then, then it kind of works. When, when I commentated for the first time on the race, it was not like this. <laughs> I, <laughs> was, I was very nervous. But by now, uh, when you've done it a few times, then I don't know, I don't feel like pressure also. What do you think is best for sim racing? Uh, a team that has good collaboration or a single guy? I'm not talking about endurance racing, like two, three hours long, like one hour and a half, oh. two hours max. Just in, just in a normal race, you mean? If you drive from yeah. the team, or yeah, it's no, always no, no. better. Like commentating. Oh, commentating. Yeah, we we always do it with two people. Yeah, and I know, but it's I think it's so much better. easier to do it with two people yeah. because you can actually have a conversation, and otherwise you just talk to the audience. But it's like it's very abstract. You don't see anyone, and you can sometimes read the chat messages, of course, but you don't really know how it, how this. Um, how, how they see it, you know, if they're really interested in it. And when you talk to someone else, uh, it's, it's a lot easier. And also, you don't have to talk so much. You can just take a break for a lap and let the other guy do the work. And also, so, when I when I listen to it, it's the same, that I enjoy it more when, when two people are, are talking with each other. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm, I'm on the same opinion. Like, uh, a good combo, because you don't have always the good combo. Sometimes... Mm. In the, there's no like magic there, but when there's the magic there, it's like, pfft, yeah, two commentators all the time. Um, your family before you had the job. So now I presume it's more serious. But before you had the job at Racer, which I still hate you, uh, <laughs> uh, did your parents and friends understand understood sim racing? Like, okay, I'm doing this sim racing thing, especially when you're in TPS day and you're like winning or like. Champion fighting for championships. Then watching, did they watch the broadcast? Your friends, your family? Well, my dad always watches the broadcast. I think he's a bit. He was a bit of a fan, you know, when when I drove as well. And I, not everyone understood it, of course. Some people didn't understand why I can't go to, why I can't go out on the on the evening because I have a race. I think that's normal. Some people don't understand it, but uh, you know. The cool thing is in sim racing is if you can kind of you can kind of explain it. You can show a broadcast. You can let them try to drive a little bit, and then some people uh, they they enjoyed it. They they also had a wheel for a time. It didn't really catch on that they still do it also, but in general, it uh, some I I think a lot of people thought it was a bit weird, but whatever. You know, it's fun for me, and the most important people they they understand it or at least they they tolerate it. 
Okay. Um, what's your perfect combo? Like, if you really want to have fun, like just for a short burst, like you don't have like a lot of time in the day, but you have you want to have fun. You take a car and a track. Yeah. Which is it? At the moment, honestly, I drive a Porsche Cup on race room. I drive on most because it's <laughs> like super challenging, you know. And I have fun because I can slide the car, you know, I can okay. I can push it, I can balance it on the brakes. And it's not a car where you have an understeer or so. You have some understeer, of course, but you also have oversteer and it wants to kill you and it's reactive. And I don't know, I just I just have fun with this at the moment. It's not, but oh. I just drive on offline. I just drive on leaderboard yeah. or offline. And But right now it's this. Okay, so um, what do you think of esports in general? Because we we all saw the big boom this year, all the competitions, all the sim race, but it started to die down a little bit. You know, like in one or two years, where do you think we are gonna? Where you will you be? I don't know where I am in two years. <laughs> uh, no one really knows that. Um, I think this year was special because, obviously, because of Corona. Um, there were a lot of opportunities because there was no real racing and everyone from the real racing, they still had to do something. Uh, and uh, that was, uh, sim racing was great for it because you can do it from home. And I think this is also the core strength of, of, uh, of games in general. You know, you have the esports hype in a lot of games, you still have it on Dota and Counter-Strike, whatever. Um, and it's cool. I, I really like it. I enjoy watching the Counter Strike, the, the big tournaments, because it's professionally done and it's a great game. But I think the core of gaming, of course, and also of competition, in my opinion, is, is still online. You know, and um, I think on on sim racing, there's a good uh, good base for for the competitions for the future. I think a lot of interest from the community actually is not always in the competitions. But it's also more like in the in the game modes, like the way iRacing does it, for example. So like semi-competitive modes where you can have a good, fair, clean race, and uh, you still, uh, but it's still for the fun. You don't have to do the, the 15 hours of grinding on one car track combo. I think it will go a lot in in this direction on all the different games in the future because that's where I think the most uh, players will join. You know, so I'm I'm not sure if we will see so many like high level LAN tournaments with the big prize money if it will really go in this direction. But what I think the the most important feedback from from this whole from the whole development in the years was that I think sim racing now really is a part of motorsports. It's you you can't really think of a racing series that is not represented in a sim racing game that doesn't have its own competition. There's very very few series that are not involved somehow there's more and more drivers getting uh, getting into the into the real racing i mean we both know tim heineman right <laughs> love him or hate him i watched the race on uh, on uh, last weekend when he drove on the dtm trophy in the mercedes gd4 and th- he was just better than everyone else i mean he's just on the he comes in the real racing and you find uh, you find uh, you have a lot of talents you know that will go into the real motorsports without having to spend thousands of uh, and, and hundreds of thousands of, uh, of dollars for the for the karting for the junior series and so on, and uh, so yeah, I think I think in that way it's great. There's a lot of manufacturers who who understand now that it's you know that it's good to have your car in the game, and it's not just you know to make some license money, but you know it's people who love cars. You know they just uh, they just use it in the in a different way than before. You know. And I think this is the, the the most positive thing about it all. So, so I think in general, sim racing is in a, in a much much better spot than it was some years before. Yeah, that, I, I fully agree with that. And uh, the the car manufacturers also they have they they start seeing that okay, if they play this car in this game, maybe there's a chance they will buy it. Okay, I'm not talking about Aston Ferraris and all that crap, but the, like Cupra, it's like a, a yeah. Ford ish car and if I race it or I aspire for it and then I race it in sim racing maybe it it pushes me a little bit towards that direction just a little bit like when you listen to music it pushes you a little bit into that Uh, I I think it's just uh, you know on the one hand of course it makes people aware there is a Cupra you know it's it's not a Seat it's a Cupra right 
maybe some people didn't know that before. And on the other hand, you can do something fun with the car. And it, it it's something you, you download the game, you play for free, right? You don't have to go somewhere. You don't have to do a test drive. And if you don't even know the brand before, you don't you might not do it anyway. But you just uh, you just play the game, you play something fun. And uh, I think that's great. Okay, so now let's sell some race room because um, this Romanian league that I'm doing, there are like two sides right now. We're in AC at the moment, but there were like next. It, it's known that the next championship won't be in a set of person. So I'm, I'm the, like the race room preacher, and there's like an eye racing preacher, and there's like an AC, ACC preacher. So if you would like what car, because A, Again, testing is free. So every, you can test any car you want. If you would like need to sell a car in racing, the one that feels the greatest and sounds the greatest and it's the most fun and <laughs> or, okay, three cars, not one, three cars. Yeah. <laughs> Oof, that's a but that's a tough even one. Even easier, three classes. Yeah. Okay, I think I think one class that you that is just uh that's still a very, very awesome class. It's uh, DTM 2016. I think these cars really turn out pretty well. They have, they have a high downforce. They have good lap times, and but they are still kind of accessible. You know, they're not super difficult to drive. You can get them around the track easily. You can have great races. You have a DRS, and um, so that's a great class. And of course, you know that 2020 is coming soon, and that that will be a class that everyone will will buy. So that's a, um, yeah, that's that's one of the great classes. You can always find a public server if you're bored. So I think it's a it's a great class to to get. One of my personal favorites is TCR. You have a very large variety. You don't have that on the other games. You on iRacing you have the Audi, I think. Um, but it, I mean it's just the Audi, right? Why you want yeah. this? You can have a Cupra. You can have a Hyundai, Honda. Lincoln Co, Volkswagen, Peugeot, Alfa. So you have a lot of variety. The cars are very close. The, the balance between the cars is very, very tight. So you can drive for different cars and still win races. And uh, of course, it's front wheel drive. It's very hard racing. Uh, it's uh, not not everyone's cup of tea, but uh, when you want to, to have hard racing, close battles, and I think it's the best. It's the best class. And uh, for the third one, I, I have to think a little bit uh, what we can what we can say. But uh, I think what what's very cool on race room is the historic classes as well. If you are interested in historic touring cars, for example, there's a DTM 92, and um, or touring classics. They're kind of similar classes, and you have a big variety of different concepts of cars in one class. So on the DTM 92, for example, you have a Mercedes and, and BMW who are you know, you have to push them very hard in the corners. We will drive. There's no, there's no um, ABS or so. So they are challenging, and you have to gain all the times in the corners. Then you have a, a power car like the Ford Mustang that can't drive around the corner at all. But on the straights, you go zip past everyone, and you're gone. And then you have Audi, which is a four-wheel drive, completely different handling. You gain five places at the start every time, but you have to watch out. You know. It has a long braking zones, and it's just really fun to race with the, the strengths and weaknesses of the cars, and and also they they kind of you know there's some beasts you know you really have to you can drive it with the uh, with the clutch as well, and it's actually like slight if you're good on the clutch, it's slightly faster to to drive with the with, with clutch instead of pedal shift, so it pays off if you're really skilled, but still at the same time you're still close enough with the pedal shift, so. I think that would also be a, a great class, probably the most challenging one out of these three that I mentioned. But yeah, the most challenging is like the Group C or whatever. Yeah. Those, those Do you know Group Porsche, Four? Yeah, whatever. Oh my with God! The, with this Porsche there from the from the seventies, it's crazy, man. I can't even drive that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, uh, in race room, I like. Uh, there's so many things I like. I like about race room. The broadcast is easier, like the you, you can be a spectator and do it like that. And the sounds are amazing. And the whole leaderboard thing is very, very nice because you can, okay, if you want to give some, do some practice and you don't have any reference, you just go on the leaderboard and you use the reference and then the ghost lap because you, you can have your own ghost lap and then you can improve on yourself. 
because one thing that uh, this is an advice for people that are looking on leaderboards look for a guy that has a similar driving style of, as you have because if you're going with a different driving style you're going to struggle a lot yeah. and you're going to the wrong direction maybe you'll improve your time but then when you're alone you're like it's different that you that you want to drive so find something that's similar to your driving style yeah, I think and, there are a couple of tricks actually. Sorry if I interrupt, but maybe there are some tricks I can I can tell for for improving your sure. lap times on the leaderboards. Uh, one thing, of course, is the goals feature, and the way I normally do it is I drive against my own goals when I want to improve. But I challenge the goals of faster drivers, you know, just for a couple of laps to see what they are doing. You know, maybe sometimes my approach for for a corner is completely wrong, and then I can I can get some inspiration. And uh, then I can I can see what they do. Another thing is if you drive on the cockpit view or if you use the the full cockpit display, then you can uh, you can have a delta time. It's not as easy to find as on other games, but uh, delta time really really helps if you want to improve your your lap time because you can see exactly in which corner you lose time, which which line is better. Um, then uh, of course I would always try. To, to think also in your head, you know, leaderboard and race is different things. If you want to improve on leaderboard, you can sometimes drive more aggressive than you would be in a race. You can go a bit wider, you know, to really try out the, to use the maximum of the tracks and just go as far as the, the track limits allow you in the game. And uh, just uh, there's no tire wear, for example, there's no fuel usage. So these are things that, that you don't have to take care of on the leaderboard. So you have to see it a bit different. But of course, it also means that when the race comes, you should probably do you know, a small race run or something like this, so you know, you know this one as well. And um, yeah, just in general, try to set a set a target for yourself that is somehow realistic as well. If you say, "Oh, I want to beat uh, Jack Keithley," then you will have a you will not have a lot of fun. But if you say, "Okay, I want to beat uh, Mr. C," you know, because it, you know, in my case, I say I want to beat Mr. C, then I have a nice target. I I have something to do for a little bit of time and. You know, I have a challenge for myself, and it's fun. That's nice. Uh, another uh, tip uh, that I have and I usually use is uh, what we both know that Jack Keatley does very well. Is like, and you also mentioned a little bit, test the track limits, like, but yeah. like on millimeters, because and this is like general for all racing. You just use all of the track possible. Yeah. And if we are doing like front wheel drive, yes, be aggressive, but be smooth on exit. Smooth on exit is like king. And that's what I, I noticed because we, we talk about this, this leaderboard. And you tell me, oh, I, I'm, I'm actually close to the guy in first out of these corners. And I say, oh, I'm, I'm not close at all because I, I drive so much rear wheel drive now, I kind of forget to be smooth on the exit. And so out of the second corner, I lose a lot of time because I, I have too much wheel spin. And uh, that's something, you know, you're absolutely right, you know, and I use all the track for sure. That's the first thing when, when I joined the THR team, Toby Davis told me, you have to use all of the track and it's so crucial and it applies everywhere, no matter what you do. Yeah, I have these small kids like in my team now and they're like, oh, we're testing the track now and they're not, not going, not breaking on the curbs, like for the corner. Like, what are you doing? You're, you're like... Leaving time, but no, 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 because it's the fat, it's the same speed. No, it's not because the entry line is going to be wider, so you can take more speed. So that's like, just listen to me. I'm yeah. not as fast, but I it have gets, to speed. It gets complicated now, though, right? Because like on some tracks, you have, uh, you have you pick up the dirt on the tire. Sometimes also when you go like on the green stuff next to the curbs and so on, and then sometimes it's like you really have to think, and if you play other games like R Factor and so on, you have to think about the tire temperature also on the hot laps. You have to yeah, think yeah, about yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of factors, the suspension damage when you go too hard over the curbs, and it, it gets harder and harder. And some people on iRacing they will say it doesn't get harder. We had this for ten years or so, but <laughs> for, for me still, but it's still a uh, you know. It's still a big challenge, but in the end, it's, uh, it's simple. You have to drive the fastest line around the track. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it gets complicated when, when you're like trying to find that last half a second. Because I presume yeah, yeah. a lot of people can be within one second. I'm talking about front wheel drive, because that's what I'm worried. Yeah. Within one second, it's like half 
decent half easy but then yeah. next half a second is harder but the last half a second is like crazy yeah. especially you now on brand sets it's gonna be like 200 people in two tenths or yeah, something like probably, that yeah um, for me it's also easy when when i drive to get within like half a second of my ultimate pace i really don't have to do any practice to achieve that but then it gets so difficult it gets so hard to to find this extra and it's always a, a mental mental yeah. exercise as well too and that's where the passion comes in. Yeah. yeah i'm not going to keep you much longer as i know you have to go uh plans for uh, late 2020 early 2021 for robert Wiesemiller, the driver the driver i want to find a I think I would be happy if I just find a competition where I can really join and where I have the time to do everything. I think this year I did one championship from uh, from Actual Vision. That's a cool community, by the way. If you play yeah. race with me, he has some cool he has some cool leagues. So I drove one league and then I drove some like special races here and there, but that was it. So if I would just find a league where I have the time to you know to do like you know maybe just miss two races of the season, I would be already happy. But uh, I'm going to press push you on it and uh, you're not going to like it. You're still going to be with the current team or like are you looking for some others? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry if I have to disappoint you there. We, we still drive on the, on the impact racing team. It's not as serious as it used to be. So a lot of guys, they went to the, they went to the Veloce eSports, they went to the Euronix Gaming and I mean, it's good, of course. If I organize the leagues and my own team competes, that's then you know that's not professional. So it's good yeah. now. You know, we are just a fun team, but uh, yeah, we still uh, the the fun ends when we go on the track, right? <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, as a, as a final thing, can you tell people are they are going to listen about sim racing? Like your thoughts? Well, we covered this passion. If you like it, enjoy it. Choose your sim that you enjoy the most. The one that is most fun, try a race room, it's free, definitely free. And the competition are like amazing in the race room. And the broadcast, I love the broadcast so much. Thanks a lot. So, um, yeah, I, I really hope we, we can have some, you know, the stuff that we do, that is fun for the people who, who take part in it, no matter if you drive, if you qualify for the race, if you watch. So that for us is the, the biggest reward, you know that we can do a job where we actually bring some fun for everyone who, who's participating. And if you can share the word, you know, if you can get more people in, that, that would be great. You know, it's just more people having fun. Yeah. Uh, Robert, I'm sure there's like plenty of episodes in us. Like we have lots of memories to talk about. So maybe we're going to do like a episode two. But for <laughs> the now, I, I'm busy with you. You're busy. You're a busy man. Thank you very much for this. And... Yeah. Uh, Go play this one, guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks you. Thank you for inviting me and for having me. And uh, thanks everyone for listening. And uh, maybe we meet on the track. Try again. I can't. I can't hear you very well. Why not? I don't know. It sounds yeah. like uh, it sounds very strange. Do you hear uh, oh, like the rain? Because it's raining at me and the window. No, 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 I can hear you a bit better. Um, okay. How can I see my own picture? I just see you. I don't know. Press the Skype something. We race. Sim race. With Mr. C. Look at the speed. We race. Sim race. With Mr. C. Look at the speed. Come on and hop in the wheel. Simple.